So today, I'm doing something very different. I am going to talk about two surprisingly inexpensive day trips that I took by train from London to Edinburgh and London to Glasgow. Obviously, these are the deranged actions of a madman. Let me explain. I had some time off work. I'm not yet a full-time YouTuber, even if it feels that way sometimes. I thought it might be nice to do some filming up in Scotland. I'd heard it was possible to get surprisingly cheap fares with careful planning. My original plan was to get an early train up to Edinburgh, film the things I want to film, stay over, film in Glasgow the next day, get an evening train back. This is what a normal person would do. I am not a normal person. I looked up train fares, and indeed there were some very attractive prices. Then I looked up hotels in the city centres, which is where I'd need to be to get all the filming done in the time. And the prices were not so attractive. Ho ho, I thought to myself. It would be cheaper to go to Edinburgh, go home, than go to Glasgow. And then I thought, is that such a mad idea? Well, yes, yes it is, mad and stupid. But it would work, I could do it. This was it. Hunter S. Thompson rode with the Hells Angels, George Orwell fought in the Spanish Civil War, and this was going to be my big journalistic adventure. Was I up to it? I set out at absurd o'clock on the first trip, my preparations in hand. Of course, I would find myself with a heck of a lot of time to kill, and that's why I'm glad I have today's sponsor, Readly, as my travelling companion. Readly is a delightful app that lets you read and download magazines on your device. Having a magazine to read is part of my long-distance train journey ritual. It fills out the time nicely and even lets me do a bit of preparatory research. For instance, when I was browsing, I found bookazines on both the East Coast and the West Coast main lines. Appropriate, no? But when your journey is many hours, one magazine won't cut it. How about 5,000 magazines? Readly has over 5,000 titles in just about every genre you can think of, including back issues that you can read on your phone, your tablet, or your laptop, or even your desktop if you're antisocial and take a desktop on the train. No need to carry lots of print magazines that don't fit on those tiny little fold-down trays and you end up getting them in your neighbour's space and you try to fold it round but you get it wrong and the corner goes in your eye and you spill your drink everywhere and everyone in the carriage laughs at you and oh the shame, the shame of it all. And if you're travelling with other people, you can share readily on up to five devices. With a single very affordable monthly subscription charge, you can save a fortune. And check it out, my dudes, they have a special offer on. Click on the link in the description below and you can get two months absolutely free and you can cancel at any time for whatever reason, like say you discover that you were illiterate all along or whatever. Big thank you to Readly. Now, back to my adventure. So what exactly were the preparations I had in hand? Well, I booked my tickets on the 1st of September. The first one was to Edinburgh, booked with Lumo. Lumo is pretty new. It's an open access operator which promotes itself as a low cost service. My train would be on the 7th of September. The train out would leave King's Cross at 5.45 a.m. to arrive at 10.08. The train back at 4.13 p.m to arrive at 8.45. I included Plus Bus, which allows unlimited bus travel in Edinburgh, and would cover me for the trams. The whole thing cost £87.60. I could have got a later train and saved a bit more, but I would have had to kill two and a half hours in the evening, and probably would have ended up spending more than I saved. And I would have saved a bit more if I didn't bother with Plus Bus, but I did want to film on the trams. I got a choice of aisle or window seat, which was nice, but there was a twist, which I'll get on to later. The second was to Glasgow, booked with Avanti West Coast. This would be for the 9th of September. Outbound train from Euston at 5.31am to arrive at Glasgow Central at 10.38. Train back at 6.40pm to arrive at 11.33pm. I didn't buy any extras this time, and the cost was £67.49. However, they did warn that there could be issues with staffing on the day. Again, choice of seats. 
Now, these are some pretty good deals, I think, but I should emphasise that there are a few caveats. First of all, there are only a limited number of seats at these prices. In fact, I checked back shortly after booking my Avanti tickets, as in a couple of minutes, and there was nothing more available at that price. And thereafter, the prices can rise pretty steeply. When I rechecked Avanti, they were advertising that I could do it from £222. You also have a limited choice of trains you can take. You'll have noticed that both my outward trains departed at pretty antisocial hours. That wasn't a problem for me, I did want to get in as early as possible. It makes for a very long day if you're planning to do a round trip in a single day, which most people wouldn't be dumb enough to do, so I don't know why I even mentioned it. If you have a specific time and day that you have to make your trip on, then don't count on being able to find some. I am very much in favour of low-cost train travel. Trains are the most environmentally friendly form of long-distance travel, but train fares in Britain are frankly extortionate, and they have this annoying tendency to rise above the rate of inflation. It's really no surprise that a lot of people prefer to drive or fly over long distances. What was the experience like? Well, first, Lumo from London to Edinburgh. One of the first things I discovered was that I did not, in fact, have a window seat as I had specified. And okay, sometimes the seat you prefer isn't available, but the seat next to me, which actually was by the window of course, was unreserved. I saw this same pattern all the way up the carriage, so I don't know what was going on there. But there were a lot of empty seats, so I just moved to a better one. The staff were okay with it. In general, the staff were great, very friendly and helpful. The seats on the Lumo trains come with reading lights and charging points, one between two seats. Which, for an economy service, is pretty good, and would even be good if I was paying a higher price. The seats were comfortable, not quite Steam Age levels of comfort, but again, good for the price. There's no buffet car. In fact, there are only five cars total. But there is a trolley service that comes by a couple of times. There was streaming entertainment, but I didn't check it out because I was either reading or filming out the window. The train stopped at Stevenage, Newcastle, Morpeth and Edinburgh. Lumo is headquartered in Newcastle, so that's where the crew change over. My train arrived on time. On the way back, it was much the same once again. My reserved seat was by the aisle rather than the window, and once again I was able to move to the window seat. Weird seating aside, I was happy with my overall experience. One thing I did find a bit weird is that they refer to the driver as the customer driver. I don't know why they don't just say driver, not a complaint so much as an observation that that's a bit odd. I don't know, maybe I'm just being old fashioned. Now, Avanti West Coast. I travelled up from Euston on a train called Penny the Pendolino. Penny did not have any charge points or reading lights at my seat. Apparently there was an option for charge points, but I didn't see it when I booked the tickets on the train line. I don't know if I missed it, or if it's not available at that price, or what. There was an option to upgrade the tickets, and that would have come with a charge point, but that would also have increased my fare to just under double what I paid. They offered streaming entertainment and ordering food and drink from your seat, but I didn't check those out because I was conserving my battery for later filming. Penny did have a buffet car, although I have to say that the sandwich selection was not inspiring. Again, the staff were very polite, although I did feel quite sorry for the heavily hungover chap sitting in front of me whenever he had to be awoken for a ticket check. There were rather more stops on this train. Just past Crewe, I saw Penny's grandfather, Archie the Advance Passenger Train. At Carlisle, we were held up by a medical emergency, so we did get into Glasgow Central late, but really, that's nothing to do with Avanti these things happen. The train back was much the same, minus the medical emergency. Oddly enough, on both journeys the person in the reserved seat next to me didn't show up, so for every single one of my train trips in this mad venture, I got two seats to myself. Anyway, the train back actually got into Euston early. So, conclusions. Well, the price I paid was very reasonable, and at these prices I'd certainly consider doing more long-distance filming. However, the seats are limited, and you do have to be sharp to catch them. For me, as somebody who doesn't particularly like the hassle of flying, and does enjoy train journeys, the low price removes the major barrier to just taking the train everywhere. 
I don't know how competitive these services would be compared to flying to Edinburgh or Glasgow, where air definitely offers a time advantage and can still work out cheaper. But for shorter distances, I'd say they can definitely give the airlines a run for their money. Of the two operators, I marginally preferred Lumo, if only because the train was slightly more comfortable and there were better facilities. In general, I'd be really interested to see how open access operators impact the rail scene, not to get too political, but the idea that privatising the railways would lead to better, cheaper services for passengers just hasn't worked out. By allowing more than one operator over a single route, you actually do create competition. Maybe... I hesitate to say it... But maybe... This is how you make privatisation work. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, a bit of a change from my normal fare, so to speak, but I hope you found it interesting and or useful. If you did, please do click the like and consider subscribing for more. Thanks as ever to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon, you are the high-speed train to my Scottish city. Thanks also to Readly for sponsoring today's video. Check out the link in the description below. And I'll see you all again very soon, where, among other things, I'll show you what I went up to Scotland to film. Cheerio.